want to harness shadow power for stealth and subterfuge? Well, then the Warrior of the Shadow Monk might be right for you. What's going on, YouTube? I'm the Mind Flayer Slayer. And I'm Dr. DM, and we're bringing you a continued coverage of the 2024 Player's Handbook. We're on to the Monk subclasses, Monk Slaps, and we're going to the Warrior of Shadow now, so let's take it away, see what we think, and at the end of the video, we'll give you our tier ranking, so stick around. Level 3, we have Shadow Arts. You have learned to draw on the power of the Shadow Fell, gaining the following benefits. Darkness. You can expend one focus point to cast the Darkness spell without spell components. You can see within the spell's area when you cast it with this feature. While the spell persists, you can move its area of darkness to a space within 60 feet of yourself at the start of each of your turns. Okay, we just need to take a sidebar right here. <laughs> For darkness? This is so good. This is basically something that you had to kind of do with like two invocations for the warlock and it was really busted in the past right being able to put yourself in darkness be able to see in it it's magical darkness so most creatures aren't going to be able to do anything about it i mean you're going to be getting advantage on your attacks while they have a disadvantage on attacks against you insane i like that this doesn't take a spell slot of course mm -hmm. and darkness as you mentioned very potent I will say though, it is a concentration spell. So you Correct. still have to do that. So if you get hit, and it is, you're being attacked at disadvantage, so there is a chance it would go down. But other than that, it is pretty strong. And it lasts 10 minutes. So you can, if you know there's combat coming up, you can cast it. If not, it will take your main action yes. during combat to use it. So there is a little bit of give and take with this, although you do have the option to use darkness and then flurry of blows to continue to attack that same turn. So it's pretty cool. The only other thing too, is that the darkness spell can be really great for you, but if your other players in your party can't see in magical darkness, it's kind of a pretty big major negative to them, especially if you're in a compact area. So this can be kind of a selfish thing to do. Yeah. So you do have to keep that in mind. And you can metagame a little bit because with this class, you can move it 60 feet. So maybe you kind of move it 60 feet and you're kind of like the edge of it and the monsters Correct. are you know, over there. But you have to be in melee too. So you want to cover the, the space of darknesses or the big yes. boss or something. Uh, I can see it either way. I mean, you're right. It's either way, selfish. It's still pretty powerful. It is. It yeah. is powerful. Yeah. And you're also going to be getting dark vision. You gain dark vision with a range of 60 feet. If you already have dark vision, it's range increases by 60 feet. Mm -hmm. So that's fabulous. And then also shadowy figments. You know the minor illusion spell. Wisdom is your spell casting ability for it. That's a nice flavor. For role play purposes, okay. I think it's fun because you can be creating little shadow creatures and things sort of just to spook your enemies. So just a fun little thing on top of it. And having a role play cantrip like that is so useful and you kind of miss mm -hmm. it when you don't have, when okay. you're not a spell caster. So that's really cool as well. And we're gonna move on now to level six, which is shadow step. Mm -hmm. While entirely within dim light or darkness, for example, in your darkness spell, you can use a bonus action to teleport up to 60 feet to an occupied space you can see that is also in dim light or darkness. You then have advantage on the next melee attack you make before the end of the current turn. I'm sort of a little torn on this. It's pretty good. You get free Misty Step essentially with the bonus yeah. action. But this is one of those abilities, and I, I kind of find this in like Gloom Stalker as well for yeah. Rangers, that you kind of have to be the one that's saying, is this dim? DM, is this dim? Is this dark? Where is this? Can I move over here? I think you're stopping the flow of the game a little bit that way. There's a decent advantage for it that way because uh, you do get one attack at advantage, although with Monk already kind of getting the ability to grapple very easily to give us an advantage. That's not that important. And if you're your darkness spell, you already have advantage on everything. So I'm not sure where this where this lies. I think it's good. I think it's good. I feel like it's versatile and yes, it's a little metagamey and you just have to be the right pilot. You just have to have the right pilot to use this effectively. And the right DM who's telling you maybe a lot of details of the room. Correct. And like maybe there's no candle over here, but there is one over here. It's not a bad idea. I mean, Missy Step is fantastic and this is 60 feet, so. Yeah. Okay. At level 11, you have improved Shadow Step. You can draw on your Shadow Fell connection to empower your teleportation. When you use your Shadow Step, you can expend one focus point to remove the requirement that you must start and end in dim light or darkness for the use of that feature. Mm -hmm. As part of this bonus action, you can make an unarmed strike immediately after you teleport. So this kind of fixes what you were just talking about. It does, about. although it is five levels later. And, th and this would replace maybe something else at level 11 that could have been stronger or weaker. But yeah, I mean, this makes that not as much of a worry, which is probably the point. Yeah. And another extra attack. I mean, you're getting up to five attacks with Monk. This would be your sixth one. You can probably do it almost every turn for one focus point. Pretty it's fantastic. a great ability, great ability. So I, I like the flavor here with the darkness. It's all kind of, it's coming together in the shadows, right? Yeah. Okay, level 17, this is your capstone ability, Cloak of Shadows. As a magic action, while entirely within dim light or darkness, you can expend three focus points to shroud yourself with shadows for one minute, which is almost the whole combat, I'd say. Correct. Until you either have the incapacitated condition or until you end your turn 
down in bright light. While shrouded by the shadows, you have three benefits. The first is you are invisible, which you kind of already have when you were in darkness yeah, spell, true, right? True. But now you don't necessarily have to be in the darkness spell. You can just Correct. be in a dark room or a cave, depending on where your campaign is. That could go pretty hard. You are partially incorporeal. You can move through occupied spaces as if they were difficult terrain. And if you end your turn in such a space, you are shunted to the last occupied space you were in. So you can move through enemies. There's a barricade or you need to get around. That's cool too. And finally, Shadow Flurry. You can use your flurry of blows without expending any focus points. Overall, I'd say thematically, flawless. Absolutely. A powerful, yes. Like a little narrow, and you have to work with your DM and other players, yes. so that kind of narrows it for me. I would say empower. You're looking like if you get it all working and it's all coming together, mm -hmm. and you're getting all the advantages, enemies are getting disadvantages, and you're really hindering them. This would go to me towards an A. But if you're not looking to get into such a mechanically complex with darkness and and uh, bright condition versus dim light versus yeah. right, it's a lot to track. It is not recommended for new players. No, if that's the case, I'd probably go towards C or B in that point. Yeah, I think I would meet in the middle. I, I would give this a solid B. Great. I think it's a it's a it's a it's a B for me. Perfect. Okay, and this has been our review of the Warrior of Shadow. If you've been enjoying this content, please remember to unarm strike that like button. We are going to be bringing you weekly content Monday through Friday of the D&D Player's Handbook trying to get through the entire thing front to back. So you know what to do, how to play optimally or how to have fun. And you'll be ready a little bit early because this comes out in six weeks. So if you're enjoying the content, please remember to subscribe subscribe, and also engage down below. We love talking with all of you and hearing your thoughts on the class. Okay, see you in the shadows.